Good morning to a wild, wet and windy morning in Dorset, October the 31st, 2021. More than 500 years ago, on October the 31st, in fact, 1517, a cleric came up to the big church doors at Wittenberg and nailed, boom, boom, a document with 95 propositions in it that was at the heart of launching the Reformation. He brought together what many people were thinking and articulated it in a way, sent a copy to his archbishop as well. What a day for this man and what a day for the church. And here we are over 500 years later on Reformation Day, the 31st of October. And I'm thinking, well, this is Christianity, you know, like we're talking web language or software language, we talk about version 2.0, etc. This is Christianity 3.21. In other words, third millennial Christian Christianity, 21st year, Christianity 3.21. Do we need a reformation? I can pretty much guarantee we need to reform some of our thoughts and doctrines, and I think the United Reformed Church is really, really good. United Reformed Church is really, really good at revisiting how we deal with things like gender, uh, same-sex marriage, uh, issues that the world is wrestling with, and the URC is very, very good at coming to the support of those who need guidance and help. And celebration of diversity but maybe our theology also needs reforming and our practices need reforming. Now, our minister, Martin Needs, has been giving us daily Bible readings. And today I rejoice that we've got something from Luke 5 and from Genesis, the ongoing story, the roller coaster ride from pit to palace, from palace to prison, from prison to palace of Joseph. One of the first most amazing entrepreneurs in the history of entrepreneurialism, if you want to look at it in that frame. But here is a guy whose circumstances seem to go, you know, why has this happened to me now? He never, ever says that. But as a reader, you go, oh, Joseph, this is not fair. And life isn't fair, is it? But nevertheless, the hand of God is there throughout all of Joseph's story, just as the hand of God has been with us all throughout the history of reformation, redemption, from the resurrection boom, to today. Christianity 3.21 is on its way to a bigger, brighter, bolder, more bodacious future if we reform our thinking. My own calling was very, very clear. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this age, but be being transformed by the renewing, the reforming of your mind. And so I'm going to invite you to follow the readings today and enjoy the exciting story as we observe from a distance. As well. I think it's exciting. I'm not sure it was that exciting for Joseph as he went through the, the downturns. But from a distance, with the, the wisdom of history, we look at Joseph's story and go, wow, God's hand was on him. And we're, we're coming up probably tomorrow to the great punchline where Joseph recognises with his brothers that what they meant for harm, that was their purpose, their will. God meant for good. Bit of a spoiler there. <laughs> Such a good story. Then in Luke 5, you have something that makes me weep when I really think about it. Jesus was moved by compassion. We have a man full of leprosy. That means the last stages. This is nasty. All of leprosy is nasty. But this is horrific. And he falls down before Jesus and he says, Lord, if you want to, if you want to, God, you can make me clean. You can heal me. And in an unambiguous expression of compassion and love, Jesus reaches out and touches this man in the last stages of leprosy. He's full of leprosy. He touches him and he looks at him and he says, I want to be clean. And the leprosy leaves him. Very interesting then that Jesus says, go and show yourself to the priests. So I think that was what you used to do before you got cleansed. Now Jesus is saying, boom, you're clean. Go and show yourself to the high priests and the Pharisees, Sadducees, the religious leaders, as a testimony to them. Wonderful. And then the, the, the chapter goes on 
and with some very interesting language. And it says, and the power of God was present to heal. And you've got to think about that today. Does God heal today? Is it God's will to heal you and me? I've been studying the will of God and divine healing and have been pretty poorly over the last few days, which I find hilarious. I believe it's God's will to heal you and me every time. I don't think God uh, makes us sick to teach us something. There's that wonderful story where the, the woman is in the, the crowd and she has an issue of blood which makes her ritually unclean in the, the belief system of the day, the theology of the day. So she's in trouble if she's caught and she touches the hem of his garment. Because she says in her head, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. And she's lost her fortune with the health service of the day. Many, many doctors. Anyway, she touches him. Now, this is not Jesus going to heal someone because he's surprised. He goes, wait, you touch me. And the disciples go, what do you mean? We're surrounded. And he says, no, no, no. Virtue has gone out of me. Somebody touched me. Somebody's drawing on the power of God. And she realises she's caught and she comes and falls down his feet and confesses it was me. And he said, well done, you know, boom. Go on your way, daughter. Your faith has healed you. So I, I think there is a space for boldness in believing that God wants to heal you and me, even if our symptoms say completely, completely the opposite. But then that's Christianity 3.21. What is it? Do we believe in divine healing? Do we believe in the miraculous power of God? And do we believe in the language that Jesus is using? The leprosy left him. Jesus rebukes the fever that um, Simon Peter's mother-in-law had. Rebukes a fever. I mean, I've said some fairly rough words when I felt ill. <laughs> I don't think it was actually rebuking the fever. So have a time of reflection today. And we've just had the first of a series of quiet days, which I really loved. Thanks to Lynn for really driving that and Davina for being such an inspiration to me as well. Jesus takes himself off after these periods of ministry into the quiet and lonely places to recharge. Deep breath today. Have some quiet time aside. Come aside with God and the Holy Spirit and let him open the word to you that I'm going to share in the scripture references on this Reformation Day and give it some thought. If I was to reform the church what would be my propositions? Have an awesome day. I know you will, if you go with God.